Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I'm the Reverend Mandy Beal. I'm this congregation's senior minister. Thank you for joining us for this special service. Uh, there are a couple more drums I see up here. Um, we can't start until somebody comes and gets those. There's, there's two of them, so. Yeah, two of them. Eh? Eh? Okay, <laughs> thank you. I was led to believe that one of you is a percussionist anyways, so please. <laughs> They're right up there on the other side of the table. Thank you. Uh, so this is very much a full participation service, and we we'll ask everybody to join in some chanting as we go along. We'll have some opportunities to participate in other uh, similar rituals, including a salt water blessing as the time comes. Uh, this is an all ages service. Everybody is welcome here, including the sounds and the noises that you make. If anybody needs a change of environment or diaper, there is a family room right through these doors that has a changing table, rocking chairs. Uh, nobody has to go, but if anybody wants to go, that's where you will find that. So with that, we'll get started with a brief introduction to what we're doing here. Throughout all of human history, people have lived by the seasons and the cycles of our planet. Our physical relationship to the sun creates our seasons. Those seasons dictate the availability of food and they impact our moods. In the Northern Hemisphere, where we live, late autumn is very, very dark. The days grow short and they get cold. And this is the time for the final harvest, the beginning of the days of introspection and homeliness. The winter solstice is marked on the 21st of December, and that's today. And as our part of the earth begins to gradually tilt back towards the sun, the light returns. Centuries ago, the traditional practices and beliefs of Gaelic and Nordic peoples were either suppressed and or, I should say, they were suppressed and or co-opted by the Christian church. Our knowledge of those original traditions is scant. It was passed down by grannies, sometimes found in old monastic libraries. In the early to mid 20th century, there was a renewed interest in pre-Christian religious practices of Europe. And through a blend of research and mystical practices, a cluster of new traditions popped up that includes Wicca and modern takes on Druidism and Norse paganism. Each of these is separate and has its own unique approach based on what we think we know about those ancient practices. Tonight, we will draw a little bit from each of these neo-pagan traditions to honor those who came before and to welcome the return of the sun. Long ago and far away, Yule logs made from oak Cherry or birch were burned in celebration on Yule, the Yule log. Ours is oak, and we've done that in order to honor the death of the oak king who rules the lighter half of the year. Our table is also decorated with evergreens and holly to welcome the holly king who rules the darker days of the year. Unitarian Universalists draw from and honor the wisdom and the truths found in all religions. It is our practice to begin most of our gatherings by lighting a chalice. These words are from Wendell Berry. To go into the dark with a light is to know the light. To know the dark, go dark. Go without sight and find that the dark too blooms and sings and is traveled by dark wings and dark feet. We'll begin with some drumming now. Everybody's invited to participate. If you don't have a drum, You've got this, you've got this.
Um, you can clap. I don't, I don't really know why we do this, honestly. I think just <laughs> clap if you want to clap. Um, we'll now call to the old watchtowers of the world. We'll begin by calling the four directions. The four directions are associated with certain elements and energies, and we invoke these as we turn and honor each direction. I invite you to stand as you're willing and able. We'll begin by facing the east. These are rough approximations, but we'll say the east is over there. Check, check. I stand in the east, and I acknowledge the element of air. With its gifts of inspiration, communication, and positivity. Guardian of the East, older and greater than I, I cannot bid you come or go. I ask nothing further of you in this ritual than to acknowledge you and offer gratitude. As the wheel of our earthly year turns, let us turn to the South. I stand in the South and I acknowledge the element of fire with its gifts of passion, intelligence, and creativity. Spirit of the South, older and greater than I, I cannot bid you come or go. I ask nothing further of you in this ritual than to acknowledge you and offer gratitude. As the wheel of our earthly year turns, let us turn to the West. I stand in the West and I acknowledge the element of water with its gifts of healing, cleansing, and perception. Guardian of the West, older and greater than I, I cannot bid you come or go. I ask nothing further of you in this ritual than to acknowledge you and offer gratitude. As the wheel of our earthly year turns, let us turn to the North. We face the center of our circle and we acknowledge the fifth element, spirit. Older and greater than I and all, I cannot bid you come or go. You are welcome in this circle. I acknowledge you, spirit, and offer gratitude. Please be seated. We're going to join now in a chant. It goes like this. The earth, the air, the fire, the water, return. Okay. <laughs>
it's hot, right? It's not just me. <laughs> okay, we're going to go outside soon, and then we're all going to be cold, so let's hold on to this. Uh, it is common in, in many earth-based traditions to have a blessing with salt. Um, you know, tonight we have loosely called upon directions. We're not casting a circle because it is uh, inappropriate. It's disrespectful to people to whom that is a part of their practice. Uh, however, we will be offering a saltwater blessing. Um, if you are interested in joining in the saltwater blessing, I'll invite you to come up to the table uh, in families or by yourself. Uh, this will not damage your clothing at all, but all blessings should be an opt-in. So I'll invite you to, to join me. Um, you know, don't, don't run over each other, but on, on your own, please come on up.
from the ancient art of magic, I'm sorry, from the ancient art of fairy magic by DJ Conway. A group of fairies huddled in their home deep under the roots in the great oak tree. They were safe and snug in their tiny underground cave, lined with dandelion fluff, bird feathers, and dried moss. Outside the snow and wind blew cold. I saw the Sun King today, said a fairy named Rose. He looked so old and tired as he walked off through the forest. The great oak says he's dying, answered Daffodil. Dying? Oh, what will we do now? Elder Blossom started to cry. If the Sun King dies, our little plant friends won't grow. It will be winter forever. Daffodil, Rose, and Elder Blossom were all very sad. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Open up, fairies, called out a loud voice. It's Yule. Come out. Come join our sol solstice celebration. Rose opened the door and the little gnome, Brown Nobby, pushed inside, shaking the snowflakes off his brown coat and hat. We are too sad to celebrate, Elder Blossom said, wiping her eyes. The Sun King is dying. He has already died. Brown Nobby's round, dark eyes sparkled with laughter. Hurry, or we'll be late for the celebration. How can there be a celebration, Rose said, frowning at the gnome. Hurry, or I'm sorry. If the Sun King is dead, it will always be winter. Oh, young little fairies, said Brown Nobby with kindness. The winter solstice has a secret. Do you want to know what it is? The fairies looked up at him in surprise. Secret, they all said. Yes, this is our first solstice. What's the secret? Come and see, come and see. Get your capes and come with me. Brown Nobby danced around the room. Hurry, hurry, here we go. The sacred grove is through the snow. He danced out of the door and disappeared. What's he talking about? What's the secret? Elder Blossom asked as she gathered up her cloak. I don't know, but the triple goddesses live in the sacred grove, Rose said as she pulled on her hat. Perhaps she can explain it. The fairies left their snug little home and trudged off through the snow toward the sacred grove. The forest was dark and the snow was thick. Listen, Daffodil said as they neared the grove of sacred trees. Someone is singing happy songs, a lot of someone's. It was the most beautiful music the fairies had ever heard. They walked right to the edge of the stone altar in the center of the grove then knelt down. Look, said Elder Blossom, there's the triple goddess, the maiden, the mother, and the wise crone. They are all smiling and happy, said Rose. All the animals are here too, whispered Daffodil. Why are they all looking at the mother? The fairies moved closer to the three ladies seated on the altar stone. The mother held a bundle close in her arms, smiling down at it. The maiden reached down and took the fairies gently in her hands. She held them close to the mother so they could see. A baby, Daffodil cried, a new little baby. Look how he glows. He is the newborn sun king, said the mother, smiling. Elder Blossom said, but Brown Nobby told us the Sun King was dead. That 
is the great secret of the winter solstice, the wise crone said as she touched the baby's cheek with her wrinkled hand. Every year during the darkest days of winter, the sun king must come to the sacred grove and die. I take his spirit to the mother who gives him new life again. That is why we celebrate Yule. When he is older and stronger, said the mother, the flowers will bloom at his touch and the air will be warm again. The little fairies sang the baby sun king songs of the coming spring, of the sweet smelling flowers, the bumbling bees, and all the secrets of the forest. All of the creatures within the sacred grove sang with them. Then they went back to their snug home under the roots of the great oak tree where they dreamed wonderful dreams waiting for the warmth of spring and the fun they would have with the little sun king. We have a really special treat tonight. So we've heard a story about the, the death of the Sun King and the rebirth of the Sun King. And now we're going to have a chance to explore that in a really exciting way. We're going to explore it through dance. Uh, this is also interactive. We're we'll doing some chanting and some drumming. I invite you to join in with that too, please. But not dancing, because that could be dangerous. <laughs> 